What's up guys? Uh, I did a quick video yesterday of my 2015 Silverado here and I was just driving it today and thought maybe I'd just kind of talk about what, what I was kind of showing yesterday. So it's a 2015 Silverado crew cab, uh, long box, which is a kind of an unusual combo. It's actually an LT truck, which is like leather seats and it's got like the better, the better, I guess, navigation and all that stuff from that, those eras. That was kind of the beginning. It wasn't very good back then, but at least it had Bluetooth and things like that. But it had the bigger screen and stuff like that. Um, didn't have CarPlay yet, which was kind of annoying, but can live with it anyways. But yeah, so this truck's got just rolled over 362,000 miles today. Um, heading heading east towards Pennsylvania, just past St. Louis, and yeah, I just kind of saw that and I thought, man, it's getting up there for mileage, you know, so that's like 580 some thousand kilometers, so for a gas truck, that's pretty high, so this thing's a 6 liter Ortec, um, just kind of, I guess, my insight to what I think why this truck still feels pretty healthy shouldn't talk too soon but it's kind of one of those things is I drive it like continuously I actually bought it I've had many many vehicles over the years probably over a hundred um, but uh, I drive a lot for work so in I guess it was about a year and a half ago to I guess a couple of years back now the price of fuel started getting really high diesel was extremely high and I actually had back then I had a I started originally with a Totorome it was a it's a pretty cool rig actually it was a converted ambulance um, a guy that owned an RV dealer there he ended up just basically building it as his little pet peeve project so Long story short with that, it was a 7.3 diesel. I had really low miles on it, actually. It was under, it was under 100,000 when I got it. Uh, it was tuned. I think it had like something like 550 horse and 860 foot-pounds or something. So it, it was pretty, pretty impressive. But um, was, the funny part about that was I ran it. <laughs> I ran it with the tune most of the time. And I tried one time just without the tune. And man, it just way worse on fuel and I could not believe how much of a difference that just it made on running it with the stock tune but anyways um so yeah that thing was just getting real expensive to drive around it was they didn't really build it very well it had a it had a really straight front end on it and it was like almost like an RV but like really tall and flat and I think that really killed the fuel mileage and it would really grab a lot of air when you were getting caught up in a side wind and stuff like that cross winds and whatever so it didn't really seem to matter how fast you drove it, like the best it would ever kind of get is even empty, maybe 10. And 10 was like a really good day. Um, I probably could have got some different tunes for it and tried to pick up the fuel mileage and I think it might have picked up a little bit, but it just wasn't, wasn't being feasible anymore. You know, I was going actually to California, but at that time I'm talking like eight, nine dollars a gallon for diesel and stuff and it just wasn't making sense. So. Uh, we were living in Iowa at the time and I decided to buy another truck so I bought a Dodge diesel and it was significantly better on fuel but and it towed okay but it leaked out of every orifice it was a 98.59 Cummins and uh, it was an automatic as well and if I would put a transmission in it I got it for super cheap and it was pretty decent but biggest issue was Without engine braking when you're pulling something heavy it just felt like you were just smoking the brakes like it just there was no way to just get it to slow down a load without basically riding the brakes so I ended up selling that one and then I bought this truck just as the price of gas was you know kind of still a bit lower but getting up there too um, but it was just a drastic difference from the price of diesel at that time and the main reason that I bought this truck was that in Iowa, 85 was super cheap, and uh, I believe these trucks in around 2010 they started getting to be like flex fuel capable. So around around that 
2010. I don't know if it was optional or not, but I believe that's the kind of the year that it came in. And so I saw that and I think gas at that time was about 420, 430 a gallon, something like that in where we were living. And E85 was only like a dollar eighty. Actually I think I think it was actually started around a dollar fifty when I first got this truck. And so I just bought a slip tank and started hauling E85 and I mean I was driving this truck for practically nothing and so everybody says it burns much more fuel and I kind of agree with that to a certain extent it definitely burns more fuel but when you're towing it didn't really make a huge difference it wasn't enough to even really be to be honest not even be noticeable really like when you're pulling a heavy load definitely when it's empty like I'm driving right now this is kind of a nicer day actually to be honest I think this truck is actually getting better fuel mileage as it kind of gets more miles on it everything's loosening up I guess <laughs> but I'll see 10 to 12 miles per gallon with this camper on the back I showed that in the other video it's got a pretty big camper on the back it's not so much the weight it's the height it drags a ton of wind too and the it's designed for a six and a half foot bed so it doesn't push right up against the window of the truck so there's like a huge gap in between there and that grabs a lot of air too so that definitely doesn't help the fuel mileage and stuff and then like I said the trailer is even even empty at 6,000 pounds so it's always behind and the camper's always on it so so getting like 10 to 12 miles per gallon on regular fuel was pretty good you know but yeah on E85 doing the same thing it would probably get eight and maybe ten on a perfect day um, so yeah it was like pretty pretty big improvement like I said, I think it had around 160,000 miles when I got it. The biggest thing was it, it idled a lot. Like, it was funny. I just started thinking about that today. The people that that I bought it from there was the first owner, and they basically used it to run from North Carolina and then out west a lot to, like, Louisiana and places like that and for work. It, it did tow quite a bit, but it was always, like, smaller trailers, probably maybe, like, 5,000-pound trailers or something, nothing super crazy hauled a lot had a few little dings and stuff like i said it wasn't perfect which is perfect for me because i didn't want it to be perfect otherwise i'd be scared to be beating it up all the time um, but yeah so i bought this truck and then uh it had like i said i think it had around 160,000 on it at that time and i thought well if i could drive it until the fuel prices level out a little bit here and stuff and then it'll kind of make sense but just kind of the more i drove it it was like oh this is you know it's pretty comfortable to drive <laughs> it's like you know i kind of liked it or whatever so i just kind of kept driving it i guess probably being an idiot here i mean i'm still driving this truck probably a long i mean i sometimes i'm 20 hours away from home a truck that has 362,000 miles on it that's probably i suppose a bit of a gamble sometimes but maybe a little bit stupid but it's at what point does a person have to start worrying about things um so it's on its second transmission. The first one was done before I got it, actually. It was a GM Reman transmission there. Um, the engine, the only thing it ever had done, and it was very early in its life, the it actually had a cam and, uh, cam and cam bearings put in, which was kind of interesting. But it was super, super early in its life, like still on warranty, basically. And, and yeah, ever since I've had it, and they had it other than that, there was nothing. So yeah, I looked at the hour gauge on it, and it has 10,000 five let me look 10,532 hours right now for so that shows you how much it idled before I got it too it did a ton of idling like super hot where those guys were working and stuff and when they started that thing for the day it never shut off basically so that was kind of interesting and I can say in the past I've had some really high mileage vehicles like most of my vehicles I shouldn't say this too loud but I never really had it any engine problems i guess um other than actually on things that were sort of problematic when i got them but uh, so yeah it's kind of interesting just i didn't didn't really think i was going to still have it at this mileage and stuff and i guess why i do is just i mean it costs a lot of money for a new truck i actually when i bought this truck about two weeks before i bought it i bought a 2015 silverado almost a twin to this and it had about the same mileage around that 160, 160,000 miles on it. Um, and it was a Duramax, which if you know about those trucks, they had the CP3, 
issues or whatever, the bump issues and stuff. That I looked at the service records and stuff. It was a one owner truck. It never had any history of anything being wrong with it. I, so I thought I'd take a flyer on it and I paid like uh, 35000 I think, for that truck. So we bought it. Um, my wife actually flew up there uh, to Reno. They had to, it was actually a California truck and they were going to charge us like California tax too if we picked it up in California but if they met us in Reno then we wouldn't have to pay that so anyways long story short she drove it uh, she flew up there and she went to pick it up and the guys couldn't even make it from the dealer to Reno and there was a bunch of problems with it so we just basically backed out the deal and said like we'll just whatever so we ate the cost of going down there and stuff and then yeah it was like kind of my fear I suppose with buying a newer diesel it's just I feel like they're not as reliable anymore it's the old wife's tale or whatever that diesels would go for a million miles or whatever but it doesn't seem like that's kind of the case anymore with all the new stuff with emissions and def fluid and DGR problems and, and injectors and just honestly probably making so much power I'm sure is kind of contributing to longevity when you start getting diesel trucks that you know everybody wants a car they want good fuel mileage and they want you know lots of power and I don't even know how much the brand new diesels are. I think they're around high 400 horse anyways, and probably something like a thousand foot pounds, which is like pretty crazy. Like, I mean, you pull anything you want with that, but it doesn't do me any good if I'm broken down all the time. So that's kind of why I've been driving this one. But so I guess the main things that I've done here, um, just maintenance, basically, um, I've run 1540 Rotel in it from the day I got it. 1540 Rotel diesel oil, yes. Some people agree, some people don't. Most people tell you that the lifters will never take it and they'll, it'll collapse the lifter and stuff. And <laughs> my personal experience is I completely disagree with that. Uh, I've actually met, it's funny, in the last year here, I've actually met a few guys that have had some even uh, the last guy I met there had a 5.3 it was a tire shop truck and he said the same thing I'm saying everybody told me it's crazy for putting 1540 in that truck had like 500,000 miles on it was never touched um, yeah I just really I just these higher mileage ones I just kind of figured that that's the way to go and stuff I've had some lower mileage stuff that I ran Amsoil in I always thought Amsoil was pretty good oil but I don't know sometimes I question whether it's too light some of these engines and stuff like I don't I don't know you know if you look at like the new Duramax I just uh, we just sold a couple months ago we had a three liter Duramax truck there half ton and it runs like 020 oil and it has to be like everybody's always worried about the clearances for the soil and stuff and I really believe that's some of there there's you know there's a little to that but I personally believe that it's just more for fuel economy and things like that so yeah so far so good anyways and the other thing I've always done since I've had this truck is I run up one quart of oil over I've, I've always heard with the LS motors that they basically kind of get oil starved and stuff and that helps I've got a friend that's a mechanic and he's kind of said the same thing again not saying whatever everybody will have their own opinion on that and uh, that's what I've always done and then I also the last, uh, not that many miles probably, but I've been, I've been running like Lucas Oil Stabilizer in it. Um, not tons, I just had a little bit. I started because it started having a little leak in it. I took it in. I actually had a really good mechanic when we lived in Iowa, we've moved now, but, and I just kind of take it then into them for the regular maintenance type stuff. Um, so I think it was one of the valve covers, center bolt gaskets that was leaking. I bought new ones. He put it in there. It didn't seem like it really fixed the problem. I can still smell it once in a while, but basically that's kind of the main thing. It's just some basic things like that. So I started running Lucas thinking maybe it would just kind of help. Not a, no other leaks showing up and stuff. And I do believe it helps the longevity of the motor too, thinking up a little bit. So I, when I change the oil, I basically top it up. Um, and then I start it and while it's running I add the Lucas to it so it actually gets in there so it doesn't just go straight to the bottom and it actually mixes the oil. I don't know if that's helping or not. I don't think it's hurting anything for sure. Um, 
the one thing that was funny about this truck is when I first got it, it had synthetic in it. I didn't drive it. I drove it home, and then as soon as I got the trailer behind it, I had a low oil pressure uh, warning, which was kind of common with these LS motors. They've got an O-ring problem and stuff. I don't know if that was necessarily the issue here. Um, but yeah, I put 1540 Rotel in it right after that, and it's never been a problem since. It wasn't super low. I mean, it was like just barely below 20 PSI, like, and that was at idle. That, that was revved up. It wasn't doing that or whatever, but it was like more on it. I think it actually did do that a couple times when it was warmed up, when it was really hot, like it was really hot outside. But, um, yeah, that's, I changed the oil pressure sensor at that time, just making sure that wasn't the problem or whatever. And it didn't really change anything, so. Yeah, I've had Rotel in it ever since. These things have a tiny oil filter on them, which I find interesting. I know they say that the engines are supposed to burn cleaner and stuff, but I'm sure having the oil filter of the day where it was twice as wide and twice as tall probably would help a little bit too there, but I change it regularly and stuff, and yeah. But it's been all over the place, east to west coast, a bunch of times, and it's always towing, so kind of see what happens here with it I guess I don't know how far I'll be comfortable driving it I really feel like if I was to take the camper off of it take the trailer off of it just use it for kind of a regular bomb around town haul supplies from Home Depot truck or whatever I feel like I would actually be able to probably put quite a few miles on it yet I actually <laughs> actually kind of believe it probably would make that million kilometers especially if it hadn't been doing what it's been doing already. I mean, like I said, to be towing like that. So these ones have the engine braking built into them. So, you know, when you're going down hills and you really has these trucks nose, the GM actually did a pretty good job of integrating that. So it's obviously it's just, it's built into the programming, right? But it's, it's not an actual engine brake, it's, it's gas. No turbo or anything, but it, it holds back some pretty heavy trailers pretty good. like. I actually put the first set of brakes on this truck at 320,000 miles just because I'm, I'm never really on the brakes enough to wear them down so and actually I don't even think I put rotors on it it was just the pads I believe that's how good everything was so kind of gives you an idea how well that works but yeah I've towed lots of the mountains and stuff and things like that so but yeah I don't know tell me what you guys think in the comments if it's what do you guys got for high mileage vehicles out there seen some other ones that were mostly just like daily driver type things there. I had a friend in, in Canada there. Uh, he had a 4.3 V6. It had, had three quarters of a million miles on it and he still drove it every day and that same guy actually he bought a I think it was around a 02 or 03 Silverado with a 5.3 in it and last time I saw that truck it had about the same as this truck I guess so probably about 370,000 miles, so a hair more than this, which is getting like 600,000 kilometers just about, which is a ton, but he mostly just back road cruised it, and it was kind of just a, never really towed anything, it was a pretty nice truck actually, still with that kilometers on it, so, but yeah, I don't know, just kind of debating what I would do next here, the price of diesel was down for a while there, it's kind of going back up, but, so is, so is everything else, I guess. Looking at me like it's my fault I got my cruise on. But yeah, I guess the price of diesel or whatever, I don't know if it would be worth to buy a diesel again. I said if I could be certain that it would, you know, make it 500,000 miles or something, because anything that I would be able to afford, <laughs> I wouldn't be I wouldn't be taking a loan for anything like that. So if I was gonna buy one, it would be used and you know, to buy a truck that has even, I don't know, a diesel that would have 150,000, 200,000 miles on it, I just feel like they're questionable now, unless I was gonna get into a kind of a pre-emissions truck. I know, like around 2012, Dodge kind of switched over, I think in 13, I believe, or it was either, yeah, I think 12 was the first year of like getting like the emissions stuff, the full emissions, other than just the EGR or whatever. I don't know. I don't 
know if it would be worth it or not. I don't really want to go back to a truck of that age anymore, to be honest. I kind of like having something a little bit newer. I'm not, not super particular, but this has at least got some modern amenities in it. So I just don't know what I would do for my next step or whatever here, but I, I like the truck and stuff. I just don't know. Maybe the next step would just be to buy a motor for it. I should say engine, everybody says motor, but I should say engine because that's what it is. But I did see an engine for it not that long ago with about where I started on this one. Uh, six liters are everywhere and stuff. There's not as many of them around that are the flex fuel setups. I'd want something I could just drop straight in if I was going to do it. I don't really have a place to work right now. Um, kind of lost my big shop when we moved here and haven't built a new one yet. so. I'd probably have to take it into somebody and get it swapped or whatever, but uh, I don't really have a backup truck right now. I, I do have one, it's, it's questionable. <laughs> I would use it in a bind, but so I don't know how long I'll keep driving this one. So yeah, I guess I'm just kind of trying to think if it would be worth doing a swap or really what I always wanted to do. I actually had a, a 2016 version of this when we lived in Canada and it was just horrible on fuel. Like, I mean, it, I think its best tank was probably like what this thing does towing. And it had bigger wheels on it. And I really feel like that was a lot of the problem of that one. I'm not too sure. I always wanted to get it tuned. I have a friend that tunes in, in Saskatchewan there. And I was always gonna get it tuned when I lived there yet, but it just never really came to be. It was just so bad on fuel. We would go, you know, like 150 miles on a tank like it was just absolutely despicable that was like towing something we used to go snowmobiling in the mountains and stuff there and I mean you would burn like on a trip you know It'd be like with the price of gas where we were going and stuff there you know we would spend $250 round trip to go skidooing for a day kind of thing which is just crazy so that was actually why I bought that that three liter Duramax then the trailer was too big for that so I ended up getting a smaller trailer and yeah you know it all goes so but I don't I don't really know like that truck had super super low miles on it I, I think it just maybe the bigger tires made that huge of a difference on it or whatever it had the same gearing it was a short bed so you know, it had like a third of the miles of this truck has less and yeah I don't know it was just one of those things where it was just so hard on fuel it didn't really make sense really like the truck and stuff but so I guess just kind of deciding what to do in the future here but like I said if I could get another engine for it maybe it would be worth swapping it just keep driving it I haven't done anything else major to it other than the transmission so I guess it could be questionable on how long other things would last too but what I was kind of getting to there was I was at one point thinking that maybe it would kind of make sense to put a 6.2 in it. I, I know there's some big changes with doing that. I think there's some ECM changes. I don't know if everything bolts in the same or not or whatever, but it was kind of a swap that I thought would be interesting. I have had a few 6.2 trucks in the past and I sort of thought it seemed like they were they were, there's just no doubt about it. They were better on fuel. It, it, there was just no way around it. So it just kinda, I don't know if it would be worth worth trying that or not. Everybody says that these trucks just wasn't necessarily just the six liter that made them so bad. It was the bigger gears and stuff, which makes some sense, but I feel like there would be something to be gained there. I know we had a 6.2 Denali that we got tuned there and that thing was like unreal on fuel you know just driving it empty obviously or whatever but like it went from I think at that time it was getting something like well which would I thought wasn't even that bad actually about 13 14 liters per hundred and I think once we got a tune there it was doing like nine which is like pretty incredible and I had a 6.2 silver auto as well there and uh I never got into and I should have probably because it probably saved me a fortune on fuel but that thing ran I always I always ran it on non-ethanol premium pretty much unless I couldn't get it but it always had premium at the minimum and it had quite a few miles well, not tons but I think it had 250,000 miles when I sold it so 
Yeah, just I think that would be an interesting one. I think if a person could find one out of that generation of truck that was a 2011, those ones didn't have displacement on demand. So I think that's why they didn't have the lifter issues. I think if a person could find like a scrap truck like that or something, and get the swap done with something like that, have a little more power. Those are 403 hours from the factory and these are only like 360 and I think those are 420 torque and I think these are 380 so I know I towed quite a bit with that truck and even towing like some pretty crazy loads which is way too much for that truck. I don't remember ever getting, I think the worst horse I ever got was around just under 10 miles per gallon which is like can't see it losing that much more to go to a three-quarter ton truck that isn't really that much heavier. It'd have the same gears, it'd have heavier. That truck actually had a nine and a half inch rear in it, I believe is what they are now, but I, I believe that's what they are. It wasn't just the regular eight and a half that GM was putting out, so. Yeah, so that's kind of what I want to talk about. Just kind of see if anybody had any input, if anybody's toying with these things lots, if they've got any high mileage stuff. I think maybe the E85 kind of helped it run as good as it did. I think it probably burns cleaner than gas does and stuff. I haven't been running it on that recently because it just pretty much went up to the price of gas and there's no point in giving up any fuel mileage if it's almost the same price of gas. Unless it's, you know, Basically, unless it's like half the price of gas, I'm probably not gonna run it, but I thought about running the odd tank here and there, but I just haven't really been too worried about it. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments there. And if, you, if you guys are running any of these trucks or whatever, or any, maybe somebody has some newer GMC or Chev trucks that are running higher mileage that are get, uh, you know diesel trucks too i'm kind of curious without any deleting or anything like that it, i don't really want to be bothered with that but i would consider buying one that's been deleted already but i don't really want to pay the money to get it deleted so um, it's actually funny because i was at an auction here about a month ago and there was a uh, i think it was probably around like that 07 year and it had a tuner, I don't know what was done to it, they didn't say in the ad or anything, but obviously it was, you, you know, deleted and tuned or whatever. And it was funny, because a big truck like that, and I looked at the fuel mileage in the trip meter, and it said it was averaging 17 miles per gallon, which I thought, even if it hadn't been towing, which I'm sure it was, because <laughs> it's a diesel dually, it had a pile of miles on it, but even if it had, even if it hadn't been towing, if it was getting 17 miles per gallon, even empty, that was already pretty good, but I'm sure it towed some, maybe lots, who knows. So, but that was kind of interesting. I've never really had any modern diesels that were tuned or anything like that. So let me know what you guys think there. Catch you on the next one.